Just the hayfield, the hayfield, the hayfield. Do not cross the hayfield that sinks the blood red sun. Do not cross the hayfield. Well, the setting that we've got for the living and the dead is rural, it is haunting, it is strange and eerie, and it has an atmosphere all its own. Uh, certain shots where it yaps stalking and, and behind trees, and, and, it, and it creates almost an element of there's something else there, there's something watching. Leave her alone! Right. Sam was very keen to get above this landscape. He got a, a drone just above the canopy of the trees. Very unlike a helicopter shot, a much sort of quieter shot. You need that scale of being able to go wide to then go into close on the faces so that you really intensify what that person's feeling. We've had cameras on 100-foot um, cables shooting through gullies for action high impact shots. The variety of, of methods of shooting this series has been like nothing I've really experienced and as a result I think it gives it a real scale and cinematic quality. The landscape is, is an ever-present character, you know, whether it's the house, whether it's the fields. We got very excited about the idea of filming in the natural seasons. Yeah, again, right at the start, everyone bought into that, that we were going to echo Nathan Appleby's descent from happily married man to very troubled man through colour, through sound and the lighting, through music. We've got these two extraordinary guys from Bristol called the Insects. They shared our vision. We use folk songs. Thematically, it echoes what the show is about, which is a yes, a Victorian show, but with a modern twist. We started off with lighter, brighter, more optimistic colours. Practical clothes. Charlie. But gradually, as the autumn comes, So her palette changes too. And then finally into a much bleaker palette at the end. And with the trees becoming bare, this pop of colour really brings something out. <laughs> they weren't going to be ghostly figures that were pale and drawn. So there's something more threatening about something that looks real. Almost a bit too real. They're wearing the things that they wore when they die then you're into compositions and lighting which are deciding whether to reveal something or suggest it in the background or within reflections. I really enjoyed doing those boys because it was all how we did the layering because obviously we, we wanted them to look very dirty. We wanted them to look like they'd almost had the hair hacked off with scissors. We wanted the audience to feel really sorry for how these boys had suffered. It's a transition for Nathan, not only mentally but physically, he regresses. He's already beginning to break down. This jacket becomes like this once he's been in the mines. He comes into these much darker tones. Internally, things are spiraling out of control for him, and that reflects in his appearance. Give me my son! At the very end, when he's really going to pieces, he ends up just wearing a, an old vest and this shabby old black coat. It becomes darker, becomes more uh, dishevelled, I guess more lost and lonely looking. Stop it! Stop. Stop this! We're getting into his eyes a lot more. We're using handheld and moving around him, and the energy of that madness kind of play within these kind of big wide shots. Oh, we're having a great time. We're, we're both very engaged and, and driven with these characters, and we, we love what we're doing. So it's been a really happy shoot, partly because we bonded in some of the most appalling weather that's been chucked at us. <laughs> Very wise idea is that from the summer, obviously, uh, we built up layers. I've got about six outfits on underneath this. It's like, inside I'm really skinny. <laughs> <laughs> 
You can hear Charlotte laughing several counties away. All of a sudden, this Essex laugh just like comes out of nowhere. She's loud as anything, but she's she's funny. <laughs> 